In the 2010s, the Ivory Coast enjoyed a golden generation of talent. Between 2006 and 2014, they qualified for three consecutive World Cups, but each time failed to make it out of the group. But what if their national team in 2010 was a Premier League side? How would they fare in league competition? Let's find out. So as you can see, there's no shortage of talent here. I'm not going to deep dive too much into the squad, as I made a video last year where I went into each player individually. I'll link that in the description if you're interested. But I definitely think that this side strength is in the forward positions. Obviously Drogba up front is top class, but also Solomon, Kalou and Jovinho. They should provide quality out on the wings as well. We have a solid midfield partnership with a 26-year-old Yaya Torre and Didier Zakora. With Yaya, we're going to utilise him in a similar way to Man City, encouraging him to get forwards as much as possible and hopefully contribute some goals. The defence is arguably the biggest weakness. Whilst Colo Torre is an elite centre-half, finding a partner for him at the back hasn't been that easy. We're going to play with Guy Demel alongside him, but he's not exactly a natural centre-half. The team has been instructed to play a 4-4-2. We're going to play on the front foot, pressing the ball with width. Let's move through the season and see what happens. It only took four minutes for us to score our first of the season. Zakora and Drogba were involved in the build-up, but it was Aruna Kone with the composed finish. Sadly, both of our opening games would end in a 3-2 defeat. We'd eventually get our first win of the season against Sunderland. Drogba completed his hat-trick in the 80th minute, and we'd go on to win 3-0. With five matches played, we found ourselves in a disappointing 18th position. On a positive note, we are the second top scorers in the division, but at the same time, we're conceding nearly three goals every game. In our last match, we lost 6-3 to Portsmouth. And with that, Demel has been removed from the starting lineup. He's been error-prone and isn't working well alongside Torre. We're going to go with Suleiman Bamber instead. He literally can't do any worse. And almost immediately, our form began to improve. Against Fulham away, Ramarek put us in the lead early, before Drogba doubled our advantage. We went on to win the game 5-0. And even better things were to come. Our new centre-back opened the scoring against Liverpool. And that solitary goal earned us another three points. With 21 matches played, things had improved dramatically. We were 15 points clear of the relegation zone and looking up at the European places. Let's very briefly step away from the league and see how we performed in cup competitions. Unfortunately, we were eliminated in the League Cup third round. Ebanks Blake opened the scoring hammering the ball home. We lost 2-0. In the FA Cup likewise, I rotated the team a little and we lost to lower league Carlisle United. Not good at all. I told you it was very brief. Back in the league though, we scored one of our best team goals against Aston Villa. It was a great build-up and a perfect pass by Kone, who squared it to Drogba. His second hat-trick of the season was enough for victory. One of the bigger disappointments of the season so far is Bakari Kone. In reality, between 2005 and 2010, he scored 42 goals in Ligue 1, playing with Nice and Marseille. Due to an injury crisis, we had to field him as a forward against Manchester United. Whilst it wasn't very pretty, Drogba won the flick on, and Kone would provide the finish. We'd earn our biggest win of the season yet. Let's see how the table wrapped up. After 38 games, we registered 48 points. Whilst we were 7 behind Aston Villa in 10th, I think with a slightly less disastrous start to the season, we could have been up there in the European spots. There were a few disappointing performances over the season. Colo Torre didn't wrap himself in glory, and neither did Aruna Kone. He was injured though a lot, so there is some mitigating circumstances for him. Without a doubt, our player of the season has to be Didier Drogba. He did miss 10 games injured, but in 28 matches he played in the league, he contributed 31 goals and assists. He finishes as the league's third top scorer, just three goals behind Adebayor. Statistically, he was impressive, averaging a goal every 111 minutes. If he'd not have injured his collarbone, I think a top six finish would have been on the cards for sure. In recent decades, the Ivory Coast has produced some elite talent. Whilst they didn't manage to challenge for a World Cup trophy, in 2015 they finally won silverware at the African Cup of Nations. With them currently hosting the tournament, I'm sure they'll be hoping to emulate their team of a decade ago.